Hey everybody, this is Burke, and today I want to talk a little bit about observables in NativeScript. Now, the last time we talked, which was episode three, we talked about how to get and set control values in NativeScript, and we made this nifty little app that has a label here and a text field here and a button, and when we would put in a new message here, we could click the button and it would change the value of the old message. And we'll jump over to the code, and if you remember correctly, we were doing that by manually getting each of the, the controls by their ID and setting up an event and then uh, changing the value of those controls. Now there is nothing wrong with doing things this way, but this is a little manual. It gets a little unwieldy. It's kind of hard to manually keep track of the user interface and manually keep track of all the data in your system. And so we use observables to make this easier. Let me show you how this works. Instead of all this business here, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of this out of here. Okay, let's pull all of this out. And then I'm going to delete these references up top to all these controls because we're not going to reference the controls directly anymore. And instead, we're going to use something in NativeScript called an observable. So I'm going to go ahead and import it. And we'll do that from data slash observable. And again, these are from TNS modules here, these data observables. This is from episode, uh, episode one. If you want to learn how modules work, you can learn that in episode one. So now that we have an observable, let's create a new one. Sometimes we call them models. You'll frequently hear them called view models because they're a model that's specifically for the view or the user interface. So we'll say let view model equal new observable. And observables are an object, so they want us to sort of build up an object with properties and events. What we had, if you remember correctly, we had an old message. We say old message, and it was a profound message. And then the new message. Uh, was blank to start with, so we can just set that to an empty string. And then we had a change it event, and that event was a function that took in some args, and I probably shouldn't have had uh, taken all this out because I'm having to retype it now. But what we want to do here is we want to set old message equal to new message. Now you, you would think that maybe we could say old message equals new message, or this dot old message equals this dot new message. But with observables, we actually need to tell the observable that something's happened, something's changed, and we do that by saying this.get or this.set. Anytime we're calling this.get or this.set, we're basically telling the observable, hey, something changed, you need to go update the UI. This way the observable doesn't do unnecessary work if we don't want the UI updated. We have to be explicit about it. So we'll say this.set, and we want to set old message. And then the second parameter for the set is what do you, what value do you want to set it to? Well, we want to set it to the value of new message in order to get the value of new message, this.get new message. There we go. Now, the only thing that's left for us to do in this file here is for us to tell the page that we want it to use the view model as the binding context for this uh, particular uh, XML file here. We do that by telling the page binding context equals view model. There we go. Now let's jump over to the XML here and make a couple changes. This text here on this label, it's set to a static, a profound message. Well, we want it set to the new message property of the binding, uh, the observable that we're bound to. We do that with this curly bracket syntax right here. Open, close it in the middle. We'll just say old message. And then on this text field, there isn't a text property. Let's add one. Text is bound to double curly bracket and we'll say new message. Close that out. And then on the button, we need to add the event because we, before we were manually binding or creating an event, now it's actually on the observable so we can bind to it. We can say the tap event is now bound to change it on the observable. There we go. Now, if we've done everything correctly, when we go back to the application, it should function exactly as it did before. So let's go back there. We have a profound message. We'll click change it and it changes. And just to prove to you, that this is actually working. We'll switch this to old message. And if I switch this to old message, what should the text field then display? That's right, it should say a profound message just like the label does. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll jump back over. Wait for the app to reload here. There we go, and now it says a profound message in both places. That's a very simple introduction to how you use observables. There's another kind of observable that handles collections of data or lists. Uh, that's called an observable array and we'll check that out next time. Enjoy.